In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. As we know is common to the readings of the church, on the fifth Sunday of any Coptic month, the church reads this gospel of the feeding of the 5,000, and we call it the, uh, like a blessing Sunday or the, the Sunday of blessing. And it's a story that is so amazing to see how the Lord was able to take so little. He found a young lad, and he told the disciples, he said, he saw a huge multitude of people, and he says, you give them something to eat. And they said, how can we feed these people not even 200 denarii, which was considered 200 days of work, 200 days of a laborer's work, would be able to feed all of these people. And I was reading a commentary by St. Cyril of Alexandria, and it says not even a rich man would look at this huge crowd of people and even think about offering to feed them. Even a rich per person would say, I can help people, but I can't help 15,000 people. And this tells us that the Lord sees the needs of the people and he insists on meeting them. What's amazing about the story is that the people never complained. The people never told him, hey, we're hungry. Give us something to eat. But the Lord, as a compassionate heart, looked to the need of the people and he knew that they were hungry. He knew that the people that are hungry need to be satisfied. And so not only did they not ask, but he decided he was going to meet their needs. So many of us, we come before the Lord and we say, Lord, how come you're not meeting my needs? Why is it that the Lord can look at 15,000 people and out of nothing, out of five loaves and two fish, can satisfy every single one of them to the point where they were filled and they still carried leftovers. But sometimes I come before the Lord and I say, Lord, how come you're not meeting my need? It's so clear that the Lord will never leave the needs of his people unsatisfied. But there's gonna be moments where the Lord insists maybe on not giving you what you want because he knows exactly what you need. The Lord won't give you what you want because he knows exactly what you need. You see, sometimes the Lord informing us Last week, in Light and Life, we talked about transformation and how we are transformed in prayer. But before we can be transformed, there's an element in our spiritual life in which the Lord is forming us. When you think about a parent who sees their children in need or in want even, the parents might give their children things that they want just to show them that your parents love you and that your parents are generous and your parents are able to give you. But then there's going to come a time where children might ask their parents for something and say, Mom and Dad, you have the money. Why can't you just give it to me? Because informing the child, I'm showing you that your parents love you and they're generous and they have the desire to make you happy. But at the same time, there comes a moment in the life of a child where the parent will say, no, I want you to get a job. You say, but you can just pay for it. Why can't you just pay for it? Because the, Lord, the parent is trying to form the child to learn so many things that they can't learn on their own. So when a parent goes and tells their child, please go get a job. I want you to work. I want you to learn the skills of work. You see, why is God not meeting my needs? God is not meeting my needs because he is forming you. He is trying to show you that he is meeting your needs, but he's not granting you your wants because he's trying to build your character. He's trying to build something in you. But what I want to talk about today are the people that are unaware of their hunger. Sometimes I find my kids can go to the pantry and eat a bag of chips and eat some cookies and drink some juice and do a bunch of things that eventually they don't realize that when it's dinner time, they're not hungry. You know, kids, we cooked you guys a, a nice dinner and they say, we're not hungry. What do you mean you're not hungry? Because we've been snacking all day on junk 
that we've become unaware of a real hunger for healthy food. We're unaware of a real hunger for nutrients and protein and things that, that add value to ourselves. How many of us are unaware of our deep hunger? We're snacking on the world. We give ourselves what we want. We take whatever we want as we go and you don't realize that it is your soul that is deeply hungry. You might say, when was the last time you closed the door to your room, you got on your knees and you lit a, a, maybe a candle before an icon and you said, Lord, feed my soul. My soul is so thirsty. You say, I can't remember if I've ever done that. Maybe because you don't realize that you're hungry. You can eat snacks forever. You can eat junk food forever. But your body will never receive what it needs. You can eat of the world and think that you're okay. You can get money and you can get houses and you can hang out with your friends and you can do all these things and you might think that you're satisfied. But the core of your soul is unsatisfied. And St. Cyril says that the Lord is faithful at satisfying and, and satisfying the hunger of his people. So my my message to you and to myself today is can we come before the Lord and can we say Lord create in me a hunger create in me a deep hunger for you because I've deceived myself in thinking that I'm satisfied sooner or later it's gonna run out it's like if you had a lot of money in a savings account and you say I don't need a job because I have $50,000 in a savings account. And every day you pull out of the savings account, you say, go get a job. You say, I don't need a job. I have all this money. And today you ate $100 worth of food. And the next day you ate $200 worth of, you know, you got clothes. And all of a sudden you start to see that the money is dwindling down. And you thought that you had enough, but you don't have what you really need. The Lord is coming to the people and he's saying, when he gave them this five loaves, it wasn't just to give them one meal, but it was to show them, to remind them of, because nobody's ever seen a miracle like this, except for when they were in the wilderness and God sent manna from heaven and fed the multitudes and gave them according to their need and gave them abundance. And later on in the same chapter of today's gospel, John chapter 6, we see that the Lord says, your fathers ate of the manna of the wilderness and died. But I am the bread of life which comes down from heaven feeding the world. The Lord is saying, I am the bread of life. How many of you are feeding on me? You're feeding on things of the world. You're feeding on the love of your friendships. You're feeding on the, the, the goods of this world. But you have in what 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 people like to describe as a God-shaped hole. You can put as many things in the world in this God-shaped hole, but the only thing that's going to satisfy, satisfy this God-shaped hole is God himself. And so you say, I'm not happy for some reason these days. I feel a bit of emptiness. I feel down. Maybe I feel thoughts, feelings of depression. Could it be that you're just snacking on the world and you're not really satisfying the needs of your soul. That God wants, you, wants to create a hunger in you that you would say, Lord, you are all I need. That the Samaritan woman who is drinking from this well her whole life decides, I don't need this well anymore. And she leaves her water pot and goes on because she met what she really wanted. The Samaritan woman who's running after love from husband after husband and after husband, she's starving and she wants more and she wants more and she doesn't realize that this thirst can be satisfied with the seventh man, Christ himself. You say, oh, we know that. We know that the Lord can satisfy. But how many of us are really satisfying? How many of us, God is the first one we run to when we have need? We reach out to our friends, we, 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 we call the bank, maybe we talk to our boss, we, we say, I have a need, please help me fix this situation. And you're un unaware that your real need can only be satisfied by the Lord. Your need for love, your need for a deep 
satisfaction. The reason why we find ourselves not content with anything. I'm not satisfied with my job. I'm not satisfied with my house. I'm not satisfied with my car. I'm not satisfied with my spouse. I'm not satisfied with my children. I'm not satisfied with anything. Why? Because I myself am empty. The eyes that are constantly looking at the world around them and figuring why the world is not good enough for them. It's because I am empty. It's not because the world is not good enough for you, but because you are empty. And so the Lord is telling the disciples, you give them something to eat. And the Lord took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples, and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise the fish, as much as they wanted. Can you imagine that it says he didn't just give them a meal that says, you know, here, maybe a few bites will carry you until you get home. He says he gave them as much as they wanted. How much do you want? Do you believe that the Lord will grant you as much as you want? But he has to be the source. You say, well, he, he, he's taking care of me. No. As long as he's taking care of me and I have my job, I'm happy. And then what happens? Maybe I lose my job and I look to the Lord and I say, Lord, you're not meeting my needs. He says, are you hungry? You don't realize that there's a deeper need inside of you. Maybe a deeper need to open your eyes. Maybe you're in such spiritual blindness that you can't see that I'm giving you everything. But because you're empty on the inside, you're not meeting me, you're not being satisfied in your soul. Your soul is deeply hungry and you're satisfying it with things that can't satisfy the soul. That's what St. Paul calls the lusts of the flesh. And the lusts of the spirit. The lusts of the flesh are the food and... But what about the lusts of your spirit? The deep desire of your spirit. I'm going to give you a homework that maybe I pray all of us can, can try for 10 minutes this week. 10 minutes this week. 10 minutes this week. Week. Tell your parents, tell your spouse, tell your roommate, tell, just give me 10 minutes. Can you watch the kids? Do you mind making dinner today? I'm going to shut the door into my room and I'm going to get on my knees. Not at the end of the night when I'm so tired, but when I'm fresh, I'm going to say, Lord, I'm, sad. I'm, I'm not satisfied. Lord, you know the deep hunger within me that I'm unaware of because I've been snacking on the world. I'm going to spend time with you, Lord. Can you sit in quiet? Just quiet. Don't come with a long list. Lord, I need this and I need this and I need that. No. Sit in quiet and say nothing. Look to the face of Jesus and say, Lord, you know the deep thirst within me. I'm even unaware of my own thirsts. Lord, can you satisfy me? Is it possible that the Lord could look at you in your thirst and in your hunger and turn you away unsatisfied? Is it possible? Is it possible that you could come on your knees and say, Lord, give me what satisfies the soul. Help me to understand your love. Help me to realize that if the whole world falls ap apart around me, you are everything, Lord. Ten minutes. Today, before you leave church, before you take communion, say, Lord, we have a meeting on Monday or on Tuesday in the morning or in the evening. I'm going to lock my door and I'm going to say, nobody disturb me. Tackle your kids, lock them in a cage, do whatever you have to do. Make sure that nobody disturbs you. And say, I need to drink. I need to satisfy my soul. That one day your children will also learn that how do you, when you feel down and you feel empty and you feel something isn't right in me and I'm just not happy these days because you didn't do what dad and mom did. We shut the door to our room. We get on our knees and we say, Lord, satisfy my soul. As St. Mary said, he satisfies the hungry with good things. Say, Lord, satisfy my soul. And I know that I'll be content with anything you give me because you care for the real needs of my soul. May the Lord fill us with as much as we want and as much as we need that we would have an overflow of satisfaction in him. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Amen.